On day three of the new server, people were very angry with EverQuest Studio Daybreak Games. Let's talk why. This series is to show why EverQuest deserves more respect in the MMO genre. As well, if I die, there will be real consequences at the end. The previous episode is linked in the comments and description. Let's go. Our group's plan was to stay in unrest until level 30, but we decided to accelerate the timeline. An ancient ruined city located off of Inethul Swamp, legend has it that Guck was once home to the trolls. When the froglocks first arrived in the area, they were exposed to the cannibalistic race of trolls and were horrified. The froglock nomads began an assault on the troll city, hoping to rid Norath of the troll abominations. The trolls fought viciously, but were unable to stop the froglock armies who pushed them out. Outraged, a powerful troll shaman entered his former city and began a massacre of froglock citizens with his bare hands. As the guards began to arrive, the troll shaman drenched in froglock flesh and blood conjured the very power of Inaruk. A destructive blast killed the shaman and hundreds of froglock witnesses, and a curse was left for the souls of the froglock victims, their physical forms forced to walk as the undead in the deepest reaches of the city. We made our way down to the first camp, Bedroom. You swim under this water tunnel and you're there. And as usual, rough entry. <laughs> Everything aggroed, and again, a running theme. Every first pull and entry is a nightmare. Crowd control takes victory out of the jaws of defeat, though. First pull, I get a critical low resist, four mobs aggro, and here we go. ACOG and Benzo burn all their mana, keeping me alive, and now they're empty with four mobs in camp. Great. So I charm one to help out with DPS and keep mobs mezzed, and we pull through again. Then, I felt like giving up. Another critical lull resist, except this time, it's five to six coming in. Three train wrecks in a row. And I can't bring this to group or we'll wipe, so I try zoning it out, but I end up dying before I get there. Death number one. We just logged on, and it's already a crap show, and it does not get any better. So our monk, Zerm, pulls because my lol is unreliable, which is not working. Lol works great on mobs that are appropriately leveled, but stuff is way out level for us here. So Zerm tags those same skeletons, and I get aggro by proxy when my bard songs hit him. I'd run out of camp because I have to eat another death so we don't wipe. And it's just 7 in the morning. But wait, there's more. I prefer to pull because I don't like turning songs off. Zerm did pull great, but if my songs hit him, I'll aggro everything and die. And I feel a bard is worthless when they're not playing songs. Like, several times in this playthrough, we moved to new zones before we were ready, and I was just too low to safely pull. And on top of that, bard mezzes and charms have terrible level caps. Charm will be essentially worthless for the next seven expansions. Fortunately, mezzes get fixed a lot sooner, but not soon enough. So band-aid mezzes were added in Luckland to fix gaps like what I have now. I have to use my level 45 cap mez until I'm 53. It's gonna be a great time. So I said people were angry with Daybreak Games. Why? Every year, Memorial Day weekend, Daybreak puts on a bonus. 50% more experience, 50% more rare spawns, etc. 
That has been the normal for at least the past four years. Everybody on Yellenak was expecting bonus experience to start this morning like it always has. It didn't. So what? Who cares? A lot of people do. Many people chose this specific day to take time off of work because they thought bonus experience was on. And they were livid when they found out it wasn't. And it makes sense. You know, if you're trying to get to level 50 as fast as possible, do it when it's the most efficient. Pop an EXP pot on top of holiday experience bonus and the levels just fly. And to add fuel to the fire, EverQuest 2 had a progression server released the same day as Yellenak, and guess what? Bonus experience is on for them, but not for us. Why? Who knows? But I guarantee when the employees walked into the office that morning, they did not know what crap storm awaited for them. People were blasting Daybreak on their official EverQuest Discord. People were lighting up their game forums. They actually revived the prior year's Memorial Day thread that announced the bonus and just spewed out complaints all over it. And I, I can't find that thread anymore because I think it was deleted. There were so many complaints that Daybreak had to do something, but we were left in the dark the entire day. But more on that later. After a few hours here, I end up going from level 27 to 30. And experience starts to slow down, so we decide to move to the next camp. Arguably the most iconic camp of Lower Guck, Assassin Supplier. And you'll see why soon. There's a shorthand name for this camp that I'm not going to say, but I'm pretty sure someone will post it in the comments if you're interested to know what it's called. By this time, I got my new Mez that works up to level 45, and it was smooth sailing. Zerm is still pulling because of all the red cons, and we end up getting a named, the Ghoul Ritualist. It's actually a Necro, and it mezzed me. That's a first. <laughs> it's usually the other way around. It dropped a really nice shoulder item for casters. And then I get to level 32, and I don't want to highlight every level I get, but there are some that are more important than others. And level 32 is arguably one of the biggest. It gives me the first mana song. Huge for the group. Mana is the biggest limitation for everything we do. Mana is so limited in the original era, and any form of mana regen is a godsend for casters. It speeds everything up. We have five mobs in camp, and my skill decides whether we live or die. Crowd control is my favorite minigame. One mob is hard to kill alone, but what happens when you get five in camp just like this? We should die, but I'm the reason we won't. So I keep all the extras perma stunned with Mez, and then I charm one, I take control of it to send it at its friends to do some extra damage, and we get through this fight, despite our healer crew being tapped, and it doesn't seem like I'm doing much, but appearances are deceiving. You just see me standing in place, but I'm probably working the hardest out of anyone here. My mezes don't last long, so I'm constantly changing targets to refresh them manually. Crowd control is a class role that got thrown away in later MMOs, and I really wish it wasn't. It's a big reason I still play this game. We move down to camp, and I think it's called Executioner. So I'm pulling again. Lull is finally reliable enough, and being able to tag Agra around corners is a lifesaver. This pull has two wizards that would love to root me outside of my group and just destroy me out there, but they can't if I'm around the corner. Advantages of playing a bard. So by the time they do root me, I'm in camp. So what? We get another name called the Ghoul Sage, and it dropped a nice belt for the casters. But this fight got a bit out of hand. A Wanderer added on, and we had four at one time. Three red cons and one yellow. And the reds resist Mez a lot more. Our healers Benzo and Acog were burned out after killing the second mob out of four. And it got so dire that our tank Tabitha almost died. And we still have two more mobs to go, but no mana. So I have to continually keep up Mez for around two minutes until healers regen enough mana that we can continue on. And we pull through, but it gets real tense at times. It does not seem like much is happening, but there's a lot going on. Last mob gets me to 33.
Now let's show some of the names we killed. The first was the Ghoul Savant. It's a healer mob. It's hard to finish it off because it'll keep healing itself. And ended up dropping a nice plate chest. Now, what did I mean by Assassin Supplier being one of the most iconic camps? This mob is why. So Zerm pulled it all the way to us. It's called the Ghoul Assassin. And it dropped the Mask, Guise of the Deceiver. This is a barred rogue usable mask with a twist. Clicky Dark Elf Illusion that any class can use. One of the most iconic and legendary items in the game. After a nerf comes in around Kunark Velius, only bards and rogues can click the illusion. But before that, anyone. Ding 35. We finally got an executioner to pop, and he ended up dropping a head item that I got. A lot of dexterity on it so I don't fizzle my songs as much. Another ghoul savant that dropped the plate chest, and I think I got that item too. I was making out like a bandit this day. Then we took a break. Logged on a few hours later and nothing looks wrong here. We started to work our way into the frenzied camp. This is the name mob that drops the flowing black silk sash. Another one of the most iconic items from the classic era. Makes you swing your weapons faster. You can attack faster. So this video is titled Project 1999's Three Biggest Problems. Let's discuss it. I've played all the three most popular versions of EverQuest, Project 1999, TLPs, and Live. And in these next few videos, I'm going to share what I feel are the biggest problems with each version, as well as their biggest selling points. Maybe there's a server that could be the best of all worlds, but who knows? What is better, Project 1999 or progression servers? I can't tell you, because what's good for me may not be good for you. But say you are interested in playing EverQuest, I think these discussions I'll be having in the next few videos could help you decide which one you want to pick. Or maybe the developers are listening right now and could try to create what I would feel would be the perfect EverQuest server because none of them are. But I feel these are the three biggest problems Project 1999 has. One, the end game. It's very inaccessible. If you have a job, a family, or just want to sleep, you're gonna spend 10 plus hours weekly to only experience 10% of what the end game has to offer. If you want more than that, you're gonna have to no life it. Why? Toilet paper. Walmart gets 10 packs of toilet paper shipped in. It's put on the shelves and people rush to buy it. It's all gone. And when's more coming in? Next week. 10 packs come in and gone again immediately. This is raiding Project 1999. There's only one Talendor for the entire server, and once it's killed, it will not respawn for another seven days. But wait, there's more. It's not just seven days, it's more like seven days plus or minus a few hours. So guilds need to put someone at the spawn and check every two to three minutes for hours on end, because it can repop any time. And that could be midnight on Tuesday when you have work in six hours. Talendor pops, you get a bat phone ring, and you and 40 people better log on quick because Talendor is going to be killed in the next five minutes with or without you. And if you're too late, you'll have to wait a whole nother week. So what? I'm not missing out on much. Wrong. Every class has a defining weapon called their epic, the most important quest you will ever do in this game and you will never complete that quest without raiding. I was one item away from completing my bard epic on Project 1999. It's an item that bards spend two to three years waiting for here. But on a progression server like Yelenak, I could guarantee to get that same item every week. How? Instance raids. If your guild has the manpower, they can spawn an exclusive talent or every week at the same time, same scheduled time. Scarcity isn't the limitation on TLPs, skill is. Complaint number two, everything you do is meaningless. The days you spend getting to max level, the weeks you spend raiding, the months it takes to get the epic, worthless. Why? Because your character's stuck in a museum that'll never pass go. You're stuck in the Velius expansion. So you spend all this time to power up your character and once you arrive, what's there left to do? 
nothing. And there never will be more. And that sucks. I, for one, don't want to play low-level characters on repeat over and over. I want to play my most powerful character, my main, the one I invested all my time in. But what's the point when there's nothing more to do? And that's what I appreciate about expansions after Velius that P99 will never see. With the addition of alternate advancements, you have a reason again to play your favorite character who's maxed out. And to add to it, there's no transfers. All the work you put in on P99 can't be transferred over to official servers. P99 is a dead end. And lastly, three, the third issue with Project 1999. Why would you ever group if you didn't have to? The way experience is split up in a group is punishing, and I'll explain it using a pie analogy. So if you kill a mob solo, you get to eat the whole pie. But if you kill a mob in a group of six, you have to split the pie six ways. There's a slight bonus, but you would still have to kill roughly like five to six mobs to get the same amount of pie as if you did it solo. So why would you ever group if your class didn't have to? You're spending more time to get less experience. Let's say you do group. There's only one zone. There's only a few viable camps in that zone. And it doesn't work very well when a zone like Unrest can only support say 18 people and there's a hundred who want to be there. P99 does not handle overcrowding well, and it doesn't encourage grouping if soloing is better. And why am I complaining about this? It's because grouping up with others is the best part of EverQuest. There's no better experience playing this game. Enough of that though. P99 is not a bad game at all. In fact, many people consider it to be the best version of EverQuest. Why? It is the most social version of this game. I have never talked to as many people or had as many positive interactions as when I played on P99, and I can't express how much that matters. It's what makes EverQuest so fun. I have had so many negative interactions on TLPs that EverQuest stopped being fun. I quit Thornblade because it stopped being fun when I mostly dealt with Scumlords, and I'm feeling that a lot on Yelenak. But P99, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to experience the grind of level 1 through 60. As long as you ignore the end game, that is. The challenge is greater, the payoffs feel more meaningful, everything is hard earned, so equipment feels more valuable. The difficulty is the environment, whereas I feel in TLP, the difficulty is the rude players you deal with. And largely because P99 has play nice rules and enforces them. The only ways you get banned on official servers is to train or hack, so being a bully is generally the norm. Seems like Daybreak doesn't give a damn if you're a dick to other people. And it didn't used to be like that. GMs used to address antisocial behavior, and this rude behavior is even encouraged in certain guilds on TLPs. See my video of this needs to stop now at EverQuest if you want to see what this actually is like. But on P99, being a dick won't be tolerated. If you're not banned, you're gonna get blacklisted. And you also won't blatantly see any of this mage box army crap and people trying to farm plat and rare items to sell for real money. It, it's toxic as hell. But I love all three versions of EverQuest. There's pluses and minuses with each. None are perfect. We'll discuss the other ones in future videos. But let's get back on with Yellowknack. So my name was stolen, as you know, and it was I was really salty about it. But now it's time to make do with it. I am now Aeonic Hijacked Handle. Screw you to whoever took my name. But let's make the best of it. While we're in this camp, a major milestone is reached. The first level 50. I got a screenshot of Lace here. It's a wizard. It took two days and eight hours for the first level 50. It's crazy. I think they even slept too. Did like five hours of rest each night. Congratulations. Despite being here at Frenzy for hours, we never got the Frenzy Ghoul to spawn. The guy who drops the sash. But we did get the Sentinel. And he dropped some nice chain gloves that I got. Dexterity and some mana. And to round out day three, I end up getting to level 38. Really not that bad at all. I started at 27. I don't really want to show this, but I think Zerm died trying to pull a name from far away, and then I went to recover his corpse, and then I ended up getting a train and just had to take a death outside of camp as to not wipe the group. 50% res Benzo has is not that bad, but that's three deaths in one day. Jeez. 
The next two days slow down because I had work, but more server first are reached. I had a little free time, so I logged on and our group moved on to what was supposed to be the final zone to get 50, Soul B or Nagathan's Lair. It's actually a raid zone. So this is an easy camp when you're the right level, but there's some really annoying mobs. The spiders have a nasty dot, the bats hit you with a long stun, and then the named stone spider has the worst stun. I think Tabitha here only got five swings in during this fight because it was that bad. It dropped a really nice druid chest item. And the last name of this camp is the Noxious Spider. Not as bad. It drops one of the best beginner ropes for casters, actually. Never used this zone much, but I regret that now. Like, if you get this Bugs and Bats camp, it's pretty safe and solid. Easy pulls. Ended the night at 41. Oh yeah. Daybreak caved and started the bonus experience this day for Memorial Day. Finally. When I was at work, many things happened on day five. So our guild got server first kills on big raid bosses, Nagafin, Vox, and Finnegal. And after that, our group went off script. I got a port to Toxulia Forest, ran to Paineal, and went into this pool of water into a zone called the Hole. A zone that only opens up after those three raid bosses are beat for the first time. When the Erudites first got to Otis, all went well until some became obsessed with necromancy. Heretics. The heretics were kicked out of Erudin and a magical war broke out. A series of craters were ripped deep into the earth, but the greatest was called the Hole. The heretics retreated into secrecy and within this deep shaft, they built their city of Paineal. Exploring deep within these underground passages, the heretics came across a magical door called the Vault of Living Stone, a passageway from the Plain of Underfoot to Norath. The heretics experimented on how to harness the power of this magical door, but made a mistake. They damaged it, and legions of elementals and beasts from the Underfoot came through. The heretics were decimated in retreat. A small group was successful in resealing the door, but at the expense of their lives. The heretics rebuilt Paineal nearby, but let the ruins of their old home to the denizens of the Underfoot. I got down to a camp called Docks and met up with my group. Not much got done this day because of drama. So the zone was a bit rough because of the high level caps I mentioned prior. Everything was way higher level than us and beyond my crowd control abilities. Stuff hits like a truck too. Despite that, this is one of my favorite zones. Fun when you know how to get around these convoluted and confusing places, but this is where some drama starts. This zone just opened up and everyone rushes to get in. And one of the problems is there's only one way through, kind of like unrest. Trains are abound. So some jerks train a guild group in a nearby camp. The guild group wipes and complain about it in our guild chat. And Zerm's reading this, and he's pulling right outside, and these jerks run right into his pull path. They steal it all from him, and then run right into our camp. So I'm not entirely sure all what happened, but Zerm got really heated over this, and he was arguing back and forth with these guys. They said they were trying to get to a deeper camping zone, but didn't seem like it. They got a little too cozy in our spot, and they spent more time in our camp than they should have needed pulling some of our spawns while they're at it. So they finally go away after like an hour of our EXP pot got burned for nothing. And you wanna see how hard this freaking zone is? Rock golems. We were really under leveled. So Zerm pulls one in and our only healer at this point, Binzo, is half mana. The rock golem is barely getting hurt and Binzo's drained. Can't mez it, it's too high. So people camp out to avoid a wipe and I have two seconds before I'm out, and it's not enough. Zern feign deaths before I get out. I end up taking a death at the last second. And we learned that the cleric must have 80% of his mana just to fight one damn golem. They are that hard.
We end up moving to an earlier camp because dogs is obviously too challenging for us. It's called Sword, but unfortunately not much easier. The first pull goes rough, as usual. And at first it's just two. We kill one of them and then two more add on with no break. Rock Golem. And I'm struggling to mess both elementals because of the constant resist, and then I change strategy. I low charm, but it's dire. I only have enough mana for two chances. Amazingly, we killed both elementals just in time before the charm broke, and Cleric is completely out. I tried to kite the rock golem, but it's pointless because these mobs summon you, and they'll keep pulling you back right to them. So I just end up taking a death here, but the charm saved the day. Without charm's help, all of us would have wiped. Charm also cleared aggro on the golem, so I was the only one on the hook. My group got clear from it, so I took a death to save everybody. Death number two. Zerm pulled the rest of the night because my lull was unreliable, and it went pretty smoothly from there. Alright, it's that time now. Five deaths, so five punishments. makes it not as bad. It's the kale. I know, I put all of it. Big chug, go. <laughs> Just stick to yourself out. <laughs> Ghost pepper, scorpion, and... Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, now it's in my throat. <clears throat> so, a question your viewers want to know. Which is the worst punishment? It was the kale one. No spicy kale. <laughs> oh, that's the next no. one. No, no, no. Oh, we should have put the sauce. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. 